welcome to the Matrix Mini Masterclass. Each episode, I'm going to be joining one of our top consultants to bring you the best tips and tactics to help you put more fish in the net. We'll be visiting venues across the country, from fishfield commercials and large open lakes to big challenging rivers. The Matrix consultants will demonstrate the skills that make them so successful, covering feeder fishing, pole fishing, waggler fishing, the tackle they use and the baits they choose. The Matrix Mini Masterclass, bringing the best to your screens. Hello, we're here today at Helen Fishery and we're fishing Jazzy's Lake. Now we've came here today because I'm going to try and show you viewers what a lovely head of eider in here and barbel. Although there's a lot of carp, it's amazing the size of eid that are in here over a short period of time, how big they've grown. They're over two pound. And the barbel, I've seen them come out of here nearly six pound. And they're really hard fighting fish. But today we're gonna to fish up the top corner, out the wind, so it can be better filming. But I just hope I can take you through how I'd catch the barbel out of here and the eid. And hopefully you'll see some really nice fish caught. So I think I'm gonna get me tackle and have a fish. We've chose to sit the top end of Yaz's. Um, although the wind's blowing that direction and we'll take a lot of the fish that way, normally you always sit facing the wind. The, wind, the way the wind's blowing takes the fish, any small particles of bait just takes the fish down to the far end of the lake. So we're sitting the wrong end really, but um, this place is full of fish. Um, I'm gonna fish caster shallow, a banded caster, and I'll take you from your rigs later. Um, I'm going to fish out there probably at about six joints of pole, probably seven metres. And then I'm going to fish down the side here where I've knocked up some ground bait with some hemp and some dead maggots. I've knocked it up a little bit sticky because it's a, there's a small platform you've got and then it goes down the shelf. And the barb will like to be up on that shelf. So I don't want my bait rolling down. So I pull it in sticky so it sticks and stays on the top of that shelf. So I'll be fishing for barbel down there. So just two lines, keeping it simple. I'm going to try and catch eyed on cast a shallow and try and catch some barbel down the margin. Uh, that's the plan anyway, so let's get fishing and see what we can catch. Well, I've started off feeding a few casters at, well, six joints of pole, which is probably about seven metres. Just thrown in probably seven or eight casters at a time. Rotate my rig every and again through it. But I've started, I should have probably just waited a while and fed for half hour before I went out on it. Straight away I'm catching, I've had a few small roach, a few rud, small carp, a decent carp. And I think I've bumped a couple of void, but they may have been carp. There's a big swirl. I had one on for about five or six seconds and then it come off. I couldn't tell whether it was an eyed or a carp. But hopefully, the eyed will move in. But like I say, we've sat probably the worst part of the lake, really, right at the top end, out the wind, where really you want to be in the wind, but it'd make better for filming. So I'm just going to keep at this, throwing a few casters, just rotating my rig through it. I've played with the depth as well. I started at probably a foot and a half. And I've come down now to about five, six inches, which seems to be about the best, but we've only been fishing probably 15 minutes. I'm probably expecting too much, but um, it should just get better, hopefully. Have a little roach. When well, I'm fishing the caster in a band, I've caught probably six, seven fish now on the same caster. 
my margin line that I've got down on the inside, I hope to catch some barbel. I've just put in some sticky ground bait with some dead maggots and hemp in. And hopefully I'll go on that a little bit later and have a look. But I'm not going to loose feed down there. I'm going to just cut oddballs of this ground bait in because there's only a small ledge and I don't want it rolling down. I don't want the fish going off into the deeper water. I want them up on that shell feeding where they normally do feed the barbel. I'm getting a lot of action there. I rotate it. They're taking it all the time, but it might be a lot of small fish. See an odd swirl there. Seems to be a better fish, which tells me they're eyed. But they can be very cagey at times, the eyed in here. Because they are real big fish, some of them, immaculate condition. I wonder at Hell End Fishery, it's probably one of the only fisheries I know, this area, that have got some cracking eyed in. To be fair, there's not many places where I'd survive. They normally would stock them and they don't last. Well, they seem to have really thrived in here. And I was speaking to the owner, Phil, he's telling me that he seems to think they've bred as well, so, which is a good sign. They're action all the time, not a little fish. Just want them better eye to move in. I can show you what they really look like. They're really nice fish. It does remind me of a cross between a dace and a roach. And it's, they're having it every time. I rotate it two or three times and it goes. They must be small fish. In fact, the small carp I caught was probably about eight, nine ounce. I thought that was an eye, but it shot off too much. And the carp I caught was five or six pound that well. That really went off. I knew that one and I straight away. But I might just leave this, have a look down the edge for a barbel, just keep feeding at them, building the confidence up. Because I've gone on it straight away. Normally I don't like to do that. I normally like to feed it for at least half an hour before I go shallow. I might catch another couple of more small fish and then have a look down the edge on the inside. It's amazing how banded caster has sort of taken over. It's amazing. I mean, you can fish for F1s summertime on caster, normally hooking it, and then pull it in a band just like a pellet, and it's amazing results. Just incredible. I would say you'd catch a third, if not 50% more, on a banded caster. I chuck in eight, well, probably six to ten casters every now and again, and then I rotate my rig. And the fish, after a while, they think it's casters coming when you rotate it and you don't feed. You rotate and tap the water with it two or three times, and they think it's casters. When they come looking for the bait, the only bait there suspended is your caster. Very much like pellet fish, and that's why they have it. It's going under all the time. They should be on. This must be very small fish. I chucked a handful of caster there, I'll just leave it a minute. So it went under, little fish. Then I rotate it three times, slapping the rig down on the water. And I'm going to take it each time. There it goes again, but no, it must be real tiny fish. So I'm not connecting at all. No idea there's been a big swirl and we've been away, so I've probably fishing 20 minutes now. I'm going to put a little ball of ground bait in the margin and have a little look down there and just leave this another 15 minutes while I just feed it up, really give them the confidence. A lot of fish there, but a lot of small fish. Normally you see, after a while when you're throwing the casters in, there are little tiny fish there. I'm going to leave that for a bit. You'll see some swells there on the caster when you're going in, so let's leave that and build it up and have a look down that margin. So I'm going to put the ball of ground bait down there. Put 
and sort of just flat, not round. So when it goes down, it lands on that shelf and stays on that shelf. out there to build up the, the fish's confidence out there. And we'll start down there on two dead maggots, although I will probably end up on double caster, although I haven't fed any caster. Barb will love caster. He can't resist it. that caster going in all the time, trying to build up a rhythm with the fish feeding and coming up in the water. Another little skimmer. I haven't fed down there for those. That was double caster. Try two more. Right, I'm going to leave that thing and go back out there on the caster now. It's been 10 minutes or so, 15 minutes. It's just a, been obliterated by little fish down there. All right, let's go back out shallow. Let's see if the fish have arrived. There, I've just gone straight out there. I've got an eyed straight away. I'm sure it's an eyed. I thought they were swirling. Not a big one, but it's an eye. I left it probably 15 minutes. Just to get them the confidence up because I started on it straight away. <laughs> there we are, lovely eyed on a banded caster. Beautiful fish. That's a small one. Let's try and get some of the bigger ones. Oh, that looked like a carp.
Fancaster again. a better ride. I take that three times, it took it as soon as it hit the water. So looking for that splash. They used to the casters coming in now. I call it tricking them. A lovely fish to catch. I seem to always have a little tail. Lovely hide. What a lovely fish to catch. That is a lovely oid. Size of that. What a beautiful fish. Definitely the best I've caught so far. Turns out to be a carp now. <laughs> sure, it's an eye. Yeah. I think it's an eye. <laughs> yeah, definitely an eye. And big clever ones really get caught. Absolute beauty, look at him. <coughs> Two pound fish. I've still got the same caster on. Pull the band more up into its middle. There's another lovely eyed. What do I get this in? I'll take you through my rig, but it's amazing how I first started, I had a few small fish, a couple of carp, didn't have an oid, and now I'm, well, bagging on the oid now. And we sat at the wrong end of the lake as well, the way the weather is, but this shows how many fish are in this how end fishery, it's unbelievable. And these oid are just, well, they're awesome to catch. Look at that, unbelievable. Unbelievable, but I'll take you through my rig. Look, that's Two and a half pound all day long. Look at that eye, beautiful fish. You might be two and three quarter. There it is, there's my rig, very simple that I've been using for the shallow line. I've got one of my MP7s, 0.2 of a gram. Power Micron 016 main line to a four inch Power Micron 012 and one of their 18 barbicide hooks. I've got it, the caster in a band, like a hair rig, just hanging off. Very important though, when I whip, I do my, because I do all my own tide hooks, when I'm doing the knotless knot on the eye hook, I whip it down the shank probably 15 times, so it sets the, the band coming off much further down, and it just hangs better in the water. 
I've got two of their little shots just at the top of the main line loop. My float pulled down, so I'm literally fishing. Probably I've got four inch hook length, and then I've probably got another four inch off top. So in total, I'm probably about eight inches deep. Um, very simple, very effective, and unbelievable. If you're just hooking a caster, how you hit more bites. And I've probably caught in this session seven, eight fish on the same caster. Um, and you couldn't do that if you were hooking it because they'd shell you or they'd take the caster off the hook. It's just unbelievable. And some of them have been, I've actually unhooked with a disgorger, even the carp I had, I had to put a disgorger down its throat and the caster was perfect, it wasn't crushed, nothing at all. Very simple, very effective. And the elastic, that's very important. I've got air holocore yellow, which is a equivalent of probably a six to eight running through the top three sections. Well, it's a top two, and there's just that much of my number one section cut back. So I've got quite a big bush put in there. And obviously very important to have at least a couple of foot of line from your pole tip to your float, so as you can rotate it. The shorter it is, the harder it is to rotate. Slightly longer, works out perfectly. Too long, it, it lands wrong. And you're not in, in contention with the fish when it goes under. Very important getting that correct length of line between the pole tip and the float when you're shallow fishing. And also what I've shown you, the most important thing, keeping that feed regularly going in. Even when you're playing a fish, try and think in your mind. I'm trying to think like I've got clock ticking in my mind. Yep, yeah, feed now. I'm coming back, yep, yeah, feed now. If you're unhooking it, you've been messing about in the net. It's a job getting the hook out, yep. Yeah. A few more casters, feed now. Very simple, very effective, but just stick to those formulas. The depth where I've showed you how to play around with the depth. I moved out first of all and I come back. And also I started straight on it shallow where I should have left it probably at least half hour building the confidence up. Because when I started straight away, although I got a lot of bites, I got a lot of little silly fish and I had a couple of carp first and a few rud before I even had an eyed. And now, like every other fish is an eyed. It's incredible. Give it a go, I'm sure you'll catch. Right, well look, I've had a lot of lovely big eyed out there. I've got another one now. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to rest it a while and just have a look at, down the inside, just see if any barbel have arrived yet. I've just got this feeling today, maybe we might not catch any barbel down there. Sitting up the wrong end of the lake, you know. Saying that, I didn't think we'd catch as many eyed as what we've caught. We've absolutely emptied these big eyed. It's been lovely. Let's finish with that one out there. I'll still feed it and I'll have a look on that inside. Just see if I can catch any barbel. I mean, you've seen the quality of these eyed at Hellwind Fishery. They're absolutely fantastic. So let's put that down. I'll carry on feeding it. I'll have a look on that inside, see if we can see if any barbel have arrived. Yeah, it might be. There, straight away. I don't know if it's a barbel though. Oh, I got. Yeah, I think it might be. I don't know. I mean, where can you go and catch oid, shallow, and barbel down the edge? Incredible.
Just don't give up these barbel. There, got him. Barbel. Three and a half, four pounds, beautiful fish. Let me show you him, they're absolutely immaculate. Pristine condition. Oh, solid fish. Oh, <laughs> can't even get hold of him. Come on. Look at him, absolutely beautiful. Well, I'm not going to feed down there again because I put four or five balls of ground back down there with a load of dead maggot and hemp. And when I'm catching barbel, I like to not feed on top and just catch what I can and just top it up sort of now and again when I feel it's sort of starting to, to die. So I'll put another couple of dead maggots on. If I get no response down there in the next few minutes, I will put a small ball in. Oh, no one down there I thought was a bar, but I know it's definitely a carp. He's going, he is. I just go side to side with them, you just conf confuse them when you get a bigger fish. Just keep up, keep on him, above him, trying to confuse him. And sometimes you get a chance you get them in quicker after they've done their initial run. Yeah, so he's coming up now. Just need him just a little bit nearer. And in. Easy as that. There must be an over them maggots and dead ground bait down there. Very lovely carp. In that margin, even though it's quite deep. He's gone down there. Absolute beauty. Mouth perfect. Beautiful fish. You notice I'm still feeding regularly out there, trying to keep both lines open. It's no good coming down here and totally forgetting out there, because you might nick a few fish then back out there, carry on catching. It's, it's all about putting fish in your net, whatever method you're on. Just keep feeding that regularly. Right, I'm thinking I'll put one more ball of feed down this inside line and go back out there shallow and we'll have one more little look a bit later down there. I'm just going to put another ball of feed down the inside before I go out on that shallow line. As you can see I still just make in my mind it's ticking away, keep feeding, keep feeding out there. I'm um, just going to put a ball down that inside just to see if I can settle them or draw some more fish and there's a lot of little fish down there at the moment that are hitting the bait and a bit of a nuisance. Uh, but the mix I've got, I've got just some dead reds. I've put a whole tin of dynamite, friends of natural uh, hemp seed in there, because barb will love hemp, they really do. And all I've put in there is that some, a whole bag, a two kilo bag of the dynamite, friends of hemp, halibut margin mix. And I've made it sticky. It's very sticky, it's not dry. Because it's quite deep, and I've only got a small, probably about 14 inches, before it goes down the sh 
go down the slope shelf, I want it to sit on top of it. And rather than make a ball that's round that might roll down, I'm putting it in flat so it goes down and it'll stick to that shelf. And then they can peck away and it'll gradually erode. That's why I'm putting in a ball like that. So I'll get my pole cut and show you. So the round ball, I just flatten it like that, pull it in like that, and go, no, that'll go down, that'll lie flat on that shelf. It's not going to roll down. If I make a round ball, chances are it could start to roll off and it'll put them down the shelf where I don't want them. And when I tip it out, very carefully tip it out because I want it to go straight down. I don't want to tip it out and it goes off at an angle. I only put one ball in and that'll be enough then before I come and have another look in 15 minutes, half hour time, whatever I decide to have a look down there. But I've still got this line now that I've been feeding out there for the bandy caster rig that I showed you. So hopefully I'll go out and catch one straight away. Only because I've been feeding it. If I hadn't been feeding it, I'd go out there and there'd be nothing because the fish would have just drifted away. The feeding fish, all the food would have gone. They'd just gone a separate ways looking for food wherever else they want to go. That's why in a match when you've got anglers next to you, you must keep feeding your lines. You can't just then, oh, I'll go and have a look shallow now and put no feed in. It just won't happen. Another big swell down there. There we are. Another big eyed. Now he wouldn't have been there if I hadn't kept feeding. You see here, I've got casters left out my side tray that I've picked out. One that they go a nice golden colour, but till they're a little bit harder, so they're easy to push into the band. So be very careful not to burst it. Makes it a lot easier, and you can just pick a nice fat one. As you can see, they're on, on my side tray. This makes it easier. If you take them straight out the pot where they've got a bit of water in, they're a little bit fresh and a little bit supple, and they tend to burst when you push them into the band. I've run out of bait for feeding shallow, so I'm going to finish off this session in the margin trying to catch barbel, which I have been catching a lot of barbel. Um, it's incredible how many barbel are tucked right in the side on this shelf where I've been feeding. I haven't put loads of feed there either. There are a lot of small fish down there as well. but. Um, not having enough bait to feed out there, I can't do both, so I shall just fish the next half hour down the inside here, then um, we'll have a look and see what I've caught.
thought I'd put a bit of the ground bait on as a paste and just see, and literally I've had three and three puts. Just a little bit of paste down there, so I'll just catch one more on it, and then we'll have a look at what I've caught. And one more drop down here. Just can't get through the little fish though, but the pace goes down, the little fish don't touch it. And the barbel is straight on it. So we'll catch one more and then finish the session. And have a look what we've got in the nets. It's been a lovely day at How End. Really lovely fishery. There we go, we'll finish on that one. Well, it was a carp this time. No, it's a bream. <laughs> There we are, what a fish to finish on. Green, two pound. On a bit of paste. They're lovely fish. There we go. Right, we'll have a look, see what we've got in the net. And call that a day. Well, there we are, there we have it. That's what I've caught. All the eyed on Caster Shallow, on the rig I showed you, and all the barbel down the edge of a couple of carp. It's been a great day. If you fancy putting to use what I've done in practice, then come to How End Fishery in Houghton Conquest. Um, I think we'd better get these back in the water quick, and I'll catch you again on the next round of the Mini Masterclass. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like, comment and share it. Thank you.